Satyrs. Creatures are half human and half goat. I always thought it would be a challenging costume to make. I've been procrastinating for years, but this year I finally kicked myself in the butt and made that costume. I made two versions of this costume, the male and the female version. What follows is an overview on how those legs were made and my ideas on how to make them comfortable and balanced and still look functional. Also, it was my first time working with Warbler. Everything I learned to get started came from online tips and tutorials, so this is just my way of putting it back up there so that people after me have an easier time of making a bigger and better project in the future. Why a satyr costume? Well, you see, all through history, the women flocked to the satyr, knowing that he was a god of love. And, whoa, hey, hey! The challenge of satyr legs is given the illusion of balance. In order to be believable, the rule of thumb I would use is always keep your knee joint centered over your hoof so that the weight transfer appears to be realistic. If you allow the front of the hoof to stick out further than the knee, then you're always going to give the appearance of falling over backwards. Now this person had the right idea creating that extended knee joint using tape, but <laughs> I'll be damned if I know how they got out of their costume. Or you can just stuff the crap out of your favorite pajamas and hop off to the furry convention. On my costume, I used armor to add mass to my upper thigh while extending my knee further out over the hoof, giving that illusion of balance. Unlike other costumes, I don't have to stand on my toes. I'm standing flat-footed inside a comfortable pair of boots. I did this by putting a pair of platform boots on top of a platform, hinging the front, and then using gallon jugs to create a mold that I eventually turned into a hoof. The next step is to build the framework that will hold your muscle structure. If you're using power tools to adjust the frame, TAKE THE COSTUME OFF! After building the rigid frame to support the costume, the rest of the muscle structure was developed using pool noodles from a dollar store. Don't get expensive when building costumes like this. Dollar stores are your friend. The next step is applying warbler to the muscle structure. If done properly, the warbler as it drapes from foam muscle to foam muscle will give the exact appearance of skin. Now get your painting skills ready. You're going to lay down your base color and then be familiar with what a wash and a dry brush technique are if you're not using an airbrush. These all add to the realism of your creation. And then lastly, apply the hair. I used long wig hair that I bought on eBay to hide what was left of my leg. And then that got blended down to a shorter hair and then what was left of the painted muscle structure. Next step is the mask. I needed a mold of my head that was pretty exact, so I applied the warbler straight to my cranium. Do not do this! Warbler is hot and you will get stuck! The nose I molded out of foam and the horns I bought on eBay. All of them are attached using Warbler and then the mask was finished off, detailed, and ready for paint. There was a point where I inhaled too much paint, caught mad cow disease, and then I kept painting. Same as the legs, a combination of long hair and short hair finished the mask off and then it was ready to wear. The armor. Besides looking really cool, it's used to help extend my knee joint over the top of the hoof to add a sense of balance. And then it also adds a lot of movement when I walk. Most of the armor was created using cardboard sauna tubes, foam insulation strips, which were all coated in warbler, painted, and then it was all tied together using leather belts. Tie all these pieces together, and you end up with a great costume that's easy to walk in, easy to balance in, and it also provides the illusion that the horse legs are actually moving. There's just one problem with the costume. After all those sketches and plans depicting a satyr, the costume evolved too large and now I realized I became a minotaur. But as long as interspecies dating doesn't upset you too much, let's look at my girlfriend's satyr costume. It's a more finely proportioned version of the minotaur. These legs are a little easier to make. Not needing the same massive height and muscle that were on my legs, I chose to attach the hoof directly to a platform boot. Then I used foam to bring the knee joint further over top of the hoof, giving the appearance of symmetry and balance. The hooves were shaped with warbler, while a combination of long and short hair was glued directly to the boots and foam to finish the leg structure off. Rather than a mask for this costume, prosthetic ears and antlers were added to a hairband that could all be clipped on top of a wig. The front of the ears had to be created using warbler. One of my favorite tools for fine detail work is this electrical rework unit. 
He has a miniature heat gun and a heated stylus, both of them with adjustable temperatures. I use them to remove seams or draw fine detail onto my project. Even though the headpiece may work on my girlfriend, I do have to say it looks way finer on me. The armor for this costume consists of bracers that were made from warbler and foam, and then a uh, leg harness made from belting that helps to obscure the line between where the human and the satyr legs meet. The armored chest piece was made from a combination of cutting a bra up and adding warbler. And once everything's tied together, you end up with a great costume that gives the illusion of satyr legs. So that's all the tips that I can pass on to you at this time. Uh, my suggestion, keep all your materials lightweight. It'll cut down on fatigue. Remember everything I said about the angles. And definitely get out there and enjoy your projects. The end.